What's up, psychology scholars? Let's go over the 2025 AP Psychology Set 2 Evidence-Based Question. Now, just a quick heads up. We don't have enough time to read over the entire EVQ line by line, but if you want to look it over while you watch this video, I'll link it in the description or in the comments. So let's take a look at the focal issue of this EVQ. Using the sources provided, develop and justify an argument about a specific social condition that leads people to be more likely to help another person in an emergency. So from here, what you need to do in part A of the EVQ is propose a specific and defensible claim based in psychological science that responds to the question. So let's take a look at some examples of claims that you can make for this EBQ. Now, before we do so, it's important to understand that the College Board scoring guidelines say that your claim must make a recommendation. Moreover, your claim must suggest a specific positive or negative effect on the question. Now, there are a few claims that you could have made in regard to the focal issue for this study. Let's take a look at each of them. When there's an emergency, victims should hope that blank because this increases the likelihood that someone will help. So let's take a look at the first thing that could fill in the blank here. When there's an emergency, victims should hope that there's only one or a couple of witnesses because this increases the likelihood that someone will help. Notice how this claim is a recommendation. When there's an emergency, victims should do what? They should hope there's only one person or a couple of witnesses present. Why? What's the impact? because this increases the likelihood that someone will help. You could have also have said, when there's an emergency, victims should hope that there's a large number of witnesses or victims should hope that there are multiple witnesses because this increases the likelihood that someone will help. And it doesn't matter which one of these you argue as long as your evidence supports your claim. And as you're gonna see in a minute, there's enough evidence in the sources to support both claims you see here. Now, one other claim that you might be able to make is the following. I'm not 100% sure College Board will accept it, and I'll explain why in a minute. When there's an emergency, victims should hope that the situation is dangerous because this increases the likelihood that someone will help. And the reason I'm not sure a dangerous situation will score is because I don't know if it counts as a social condition. I know that a large group or a small group of people would constitute a social condition, but again, I'm not sure that a dangerous situation will. Okay, let's take a look at what the College Board wants for parts B1 and separately C1. Here, you're supposed to support your claim using at least one piece of specific and relevant evidence from one of your sources. And remember, your evidence for B1 and C1 must come from two different sources, and you need to cite your sources properly or you won't score. Now, before we move on, I just wanna point out real quick that each piece of evidence we look at is gonna be color-coded based on the claim that you see here. So the idea that victims should hope that there's one or a couple of witnesses will be color-coded in blue, the idea that victims should hope that there's a large number of witnesses will be in red, and the idea that victims should hope that the situation is dangerous, those pieces of evidence will be found in green. All right, let's take a look at the evidence from source one. It says, 85% of the participants who thought they were alone reported the emergency by the time the Confederates stopped their scripted performance, compared to 62% of the participants who thought one other was present and 31% who thought four others were present. Another piece of evidence from source one says that participants who thought they were alone responded within 52 seconds of the emergency while participants who thought one other person was present responded in 93 seconds, and participants who thought four others were present responded in 166 seconds. And again, the reason this is color-coded in blue is because both of these pieces of evidence support the idea that a person is more likely to receive help when there are a small number of witnesses present. Okay, let's take a look at the evidence from source two. It says, researchers found that a higher number of people present at an incident was positively associated with the likelihood of intervention and that each additional person present increased the odds that an intervention occurred. So as you can see here, this evidence supports the idea that more people witnessing an event will lead to a higher likelihood of a victim getting help. All right, moving on to source three, it says, when fewer people witnessing a situation are present, at least one additional person present in a situation leads to a higher likelihood of helping. However, groups with three four or five or more members were least likely to help in a situation. So this supports our claim that having a couple of people witness an emergency leads to the victim having a higher chance of getting help. Now, the interesting thing about source three is that it has evidence that supports multiple claims. So here it says, when people witnessing a situation know each other and are not complete strangers, if the people witnessing the event knew one another, whether as friends or acquaintances, 
they were more likely to help. So the reason this piece of evidence is red is because it supports the idea that when there are multiple witnesses who, in this case, just happen to know each other, a victim is more likely to receive help. Now, the evidence from Source 3 doesn't stop here. It also supports the claim that a person is more likely to receive help in an emergency situation. For example, people who perceived a situation in which a person needed help as an emergency more dangerous, or more likely to help than when the situation was perceived as a non-emergency. Moreover, when a perpetrator is present, people witnessing a situation in which the perpetrator was present were more likely to help than when no perpetrator was present. This finding is consistent with the finding that people are more willing to help if a situation is perceived as dangerous. Now you may be thinking, Mr. Ireland, you only gave us evidence from one source that supported the claim that people are more likely to help if the situation is perceived as dangerous. Now that's true, but I also think there might be more pieces of evidence from source two that also support this claim. With that said, I didn't provide you every single little piece of evidence that you could have used for your EBQ. I provided you with a general overview of the major pieces of evidence that can be found in the sources. So now we need to move on to parts B2 and C2. This is where they want you to explain how the evidence from parts B1 and C1 respectively support your claim using a psychological perspective, theory, concept, or research research finding learned in AP Psychology. Now as a reminder, the key concepts that you choose from parts B2 and separately C2 must be different. So the first thing that we're going to look at are some examples that support the claim that a victim is more likely to receive help when there are a small number of witnesses. Now just a heads up, if you made a different claim for parts B2 and C2, your responses are going to look a little different from what I'm about to show you. So here we go. This evidence supports my claim that victims should hope there's only one or a couple of witnesses in an emergency because some individuals are more likely to show altruism, there's your key site concept there, when they see someone in need and there's no one else around to help. This desire to act altruistically can diminish in the presence of other witnesses due to a diffusion of responsibility meaning that a victim is more likely to receive help when there aren't many bystanders. Now here's another example that supports the same claim. This evidence supports my claim that victims should hope there's only one or a couple of witnesses in an emergency because in this social context, an individual might be more likely to think about and adhere to the social responsibility norm, which is the expectation that people should help those in need when possible. Conversely, when there are a large number of witnesses, the belief that someone else will render assistance can outweigh this norm resulting in the victim not getting help. And you could also probably tie in the cognitive perspective here in regard to how this person has different beliefs in different social contexts. With that said, I wanna point out something real quick. You might not be able to use the key term, the bystander effect, as your key concept for parts B2 or C2. And the reason is because the College Board included this term in one of the references for one of the sources. In fact, I think it might've been included in multiple sources. And the College Board has said in the past, if the key concept is included in the prompt or in the sources, you cannot use that term as your answer for parts B2 or C2. Now, with that said, I feel like we're in a little bit of a gray area because the bystander effect was included in the reference and not in the source itself. So we can only hope that the College Board will allow this term to score because I think a lot of students use the bystander effect as one of their key concepts. Now we're gonna take a look at some examples that support the claim that a large number of witnesses is better for a victim to get help. So here we go. This evidence supports my claim that victims should hope there are a large number of witnesses in an emergency because when there are more witnesses, there is a greater chance that some of those witnesses will reject the just world phenomenon on. That's your key concept there. Meaning that they won't think that the victim deserves their fate and consequently they'll step in to help. Here's another example that supports the same claim. This evidence supports my claim because if someone has been positively reinforced in the past for helping someone in need, they may be more inclined to help someone in an emergency situation when there's a large crowd present because they think they will be positively reinforced in a similar manner as before, such as they think that the crowd might cheer them on. This person may be less inclined to help if there are no other witnesses because they may not receive the reinforcement they crave. Now, this is a terrible person in real life, but I believe this answer would score for part 
B2 or C2. And again, I think there are more key concepts that you could use here to support the notion that a large number of people is better for a witness getting help. Okay, next up, I wanted to give you one example that supports the claim that victims should hope that the emergency is perceived as dangerous, and here's why because some individuals may be motivated by the sensation-seeking theory to step in and help because they love the increased stimulation that being in such a dangerous situation brings about. So again, some people might want to help just because they love the thrill of being in such a dangerous situation. Now, as I mentioned before, there are definitely other terms that you could use for parts B2 and C2. And I'll give you a few examples here, but again, this is not going to be an end-all, be-all list. So one other term that you could use for parts B2 and C2 is agreeableness. Maybe Maybe highly agreeable people might be more likely to help due to their unselfish nature and you would want to tie that back to group size. Another term that might work is the behavioral perspective. We've already talked about positive reinforcement, so you could definitely tie in the behavioral perspective in a similar way. Moreover, you could also talk about conformity. Maybe if there's a large number of witnesses, people may conform to the group. In other words, they may want to help, but because no one else is helping, they may not help. Another term that might work here is emotional stability or neuroticism. In other words, maybe highly neurotic people may be less likely to help in a larger group setting because of the perceived pressure that that large group puts on them. And therefore, a small number of witnesses may be better for a neurotic person to help. Another term that might work here is the fundamental attribution error. In other words, if someone believes that the victim's own character traits or decisions got them into the situation that they're in without taking into consideration the environmental factors that led to that situation, they may be less inclined to help. So maybe if there's a larger group of people, some of those people may have overcome or not experienced the fundamental attribution error, leading the victim to get the help they need. Another term that might work here is groupthink. And you might be able to talk about how groupthink in a large crowd may reinforce the bystander effect. You could also talk about the difference between individualistic or collectivist cultures and how each of these cultures may be more or less willing to help depending on the size of the group. Something else you could mention is Lewin's motivational conflicts. In other words, if someone is experiencing the approach avoidance conflict in regard to helping, so maybe it would be a good thing for them to help, but on the other hand, the avoidance part is that they might get hurt if they do so. So you could talk about how, you know, if there's a small number of people around, and someone may be more motivated to help because they won't care as much about the avoidance factor that they may get hurt. Compared to when there's a large group around, they may think, you know what, there's a large group around, there is a potential of me getting hurt, so maybe I'll let someone else handle it and I'm gonna avoid this situation altogether because I don't wanna get hurt and there's someone else out there who will probably help. Something else that may score here are social norms. You know, the more witnesses there are, the more likely that there's going to be some sort of emergency responder in the crowd. So so maybe there's a social norm that police officers, firefighters, doctors, whoever should help people no matter what, even if those individuals are off duty. So if there's a large crowd that witnesses an emergency situation, there's a higher likelihood that an emergency first responder will be in that crowd. And therefore, there's a higher chance that the person will get help because that emergency first responder is going to fulfill the social norm of helping no matter what, even if they are off duty. And again, this is definitely not an all-inclusive list. There are definitely other key psych terms or concepts that you could use from the curriculum for parts B2 and C2 here. With that said, as I said before, go ahead and put down the terms that you put for parts B2 and C2 in the comments. I'll catch you later, all-stars.